afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Montpelier, Vermont. The capital of the state of Vermont, Montpelier, opens its doors to everybody on this, the 3rd of July, for the 4th of July celebration. My name is Brent Curtis, and I'll be doing a little parade work with you. My co-pilot today is Kathy Apgar from uh, over in the Bristol area. Kathy, welcome aboard. Thanks, Brent. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. And here comes our first runners through. Wow. So the, uh, the, Montpelier, Montpelier, the Montpelier Mile is uh, in route right now. Everybody's on the move. And speaking of being on the move, let's talk to Dan Groberg from uh, Montpelier Alive. Dan, welcome. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's great to have you here. Dan, this is an effort in, of just plain love for you. Let's talk about how many years you've been doing this and your various stages of involvement. Sure. Well, Montpelier Alive has been uh, working with the city of Montpelier to host events on July 3rd for more than 20 years. And I've been at Montpelier Alive for uh, four and a half years now. This would have been my fifth event, except we, uh, as you know, had to cancel the last two years due to the pandemic. You know, this is the type of thing that people always think that, oh, that went by smoothly. That must be really easy to put together. Take a minute, if you will, and uh, Dan, talk to us about the preparation that's necessary. If people don't see the seams, that means we've done our job well, but it takes months and months of planning, a uh, big crew of uh, people, staff, and volunteers to make it happen. Uh, we start planning really when we budget for the year back in the fall, but um, in earnest in January planning for this event. Outstanding. And can you tell me how big the team is that you have putting this together? Sure. So I have an event coordinator, and then I have a parade coordinator and a vendor coordinator, and then a lot of volunteers and a lot of help from the city of Montpelier. Oh, that's just wonderful. I'm going to ask you to just shoot this one from the hip, and that is about how many volunteers come together to help put this project on? We have about 50 volunteers helping us today. Oh, that is just incredible. Now, I know there are some major sponsors here. Would you like to just discuss the, uh, the yeah, major sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as you might imagine, it takes a lot to put on an event of this scale, and I'm really grateful, especially for our platinum sponsors, National Life Group, North Country Federal Credit Union, Community National Bank, and Union Mutual Insurance, and, and also, again, to the city of Montpelier for, in addition to the financial support, a tons of time behind the scenes, police officers, public works, fire department, helping to make this happen. And you know, Dan, the years that I have been here, these names are all just about uh, names I've heard before. You have longtime family of advertisers, don't you? We do. North Country Federal Credit Union's new this year, and we're very grateful to them for joining us, but um, a lot of our sponsors have been with us for years and years, and I think it's because they love Montpelier as much as we do and want to be here to celebrate with everyone. Dan, according to the Vermont uh, uh, Agency of Tourism, this is a this is a very big event for people visiting the state of Vermont. It is. I've seen people from all over. Uh, we usually draw between 10 and 15,000 people to come down for this event, and today it certainly feels like we're near the upper number of that. I'll tell you what, we hit the beautiful weather today. We had a little rain earlier on, but it's showtime. It's just about 74 degrees. The sun is just dipping over the horizon. Everybody's in a great mood as these milers come by. And the, the idea is, how did you plan for this event, and how did you plan to put the run first, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I ordered the weather specifically, <laughs> so that came through. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of, some of it is tradition, and some of it is new. The, the biggest change this year was that we had some uh, family performers on the State House lawn in the afternoon. Uh, we, we've had in the past uh, activities or different events, but we a really great group of performers this afternoon, and that was a lot of fun. But uh, for the most part, it's a similar schedule to how we've been doing it for a long time. Dan, let's talk about what happened on the Capitol lawn this afternoon. Give the, uh, give the folks an idea of what the events were and how it all came together. Yeah, well, my favorite part, of course, is the food trucks. Uh, <laughs> if, if you love festival food, you will love being here. There's just everything from fried dough to Indian food, really, because it's Montpelier, so we have quite a variety, diversity. Um, and then starting at 2 o'clock, we had some performers on the State House lawn. So we had uh, John Gilmore, who's a local children's musician. We had Karubo, who's an Afro jazz performer from Burlington. And then we had a really fun group, uh, Big Nazo, along with the Providence Drum Troupe here from Providence, Rhode Island. And they are... Uh, they dress up in these crazy, huge alien costumes. Um, it's a really a sight to see, uh, with, along with the drum line. They're going to be in the parade, so you'll see them in a little bit here, too. You know, I thought the best logistical change was moving the food trucks to the Department of Motor Vehicles side and kind of opening up the front of the cab.
Capitol. Whose idea was that? Well, they've been there a few years. We've tried various configurations. Uh, always a balancing act to get as many food trucks to keep the line short and make a great experience for our, our visitors as well. Any idea how many food trucks showed up this we year? We have about uh, 30 or 35 trucks uh, total. About 25 of those are food trucks, yeah. Outstanding. Okay. Now, again, great day. People are all excited. The talk around all kinds of media sources is whether or not with the current political uh, situation across the country, are parades still attractive to the public? My vote is yes. What do you think? You know, I think yes, this is an event for Independence Day, but really it's an event to bring the community together and celebrate all we have here in Montpelier and in the state of Vermont. And so, you know, I think there's a, a lot of a valid concern about what's happening in the, in the country, and it's disappointing to me as well. But this is just a great opportunity. If you're down here, you see, you know, your friends and neighbors coming together and it's about celebrating Montpelier, first and foremost. What I'd like you to do for a minute, if you would, please, Dan, is just stop and reflect on some of the highest points for you putting this program together. Well, uh, I think it, the day being here after, uh, you know, checking a million things off the list and finally seeing it come together and uh, having all the people here enjoying themselves, that's my favorite part. Because, uh, like I said, a lot of work goes into this behind the scenes. And, you know, our goal is that when you come here, you don't see any of that work. You just have a fun day. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, uh, certainly in the minds of people from Montpelier and so many people that visit us here, you are an absolute rock star. I congratulate you on a great project, and we're just excited to get this parade underway this afternoon. Uh, again, we have something interesting going on, and that is voting for the favorite performer in the parade. Let's just talk about this, because this was really fun last time we did it. Yeah, you know, we really wanted uh, performers to up their game and <laughs> give us their, you know, their best shot. And so uh, Union Mutual joined us to sponsor a competition for the parade performers. And uh, people can text 802-200-0908, text vote to 802 200 0908 and you can vote for your favorite of the people who entered the competition and the top prize is five hundred dollars so. oh buddy yeah all right now i think for people that are not particularly savvy with technology what they should know is that when you go to this particular location they're all listed right there for you they are you just send a text message if you can do that you'll get a text back and you just say which letter to vote for and that's it on behalf of those of us who utilize our nephews to help us do our phone, we thank you. Kathy, coming out of the uh, New Haven Junction area, do you have any questions for Dan and on how things work? So, I'm just curious, Dan, how many towns are represented in, in this effort? Is it all strictly a Montpelier effort? You know, Montpelier puts on the event, but we have people from all over Central Vermont come to this. Um, you know, we intentionally have our event on the 3rd so that we're not competing with some of the smaller towns that do events on the 4th. Um, and so we'll have people from, you know, Worcester, from East Montpelier, from Calais. I heard someone was up here from Rutland, so uh, people from all across Vermont really come. And I thought that was brilliant, by the way. Yeah. You know, we have the Waterbury Parade that's on the 28th of June, which is, wow, <laughs> that's something. But then I think the idea that doing it on the 3rd, first, first of all, it's beautiful. It's a Sunday. It's just an enjoyable time. And then you can also add on to it a Monday at wherever you want to go, whether it's Morrisville, whether it's Barrie, uh, but oh, that Bristol. was some great strategic Bristol. planning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, hopefully I'll get to go out to the Western Parade tomorrow, or maybe the Warren Parade, the world-famous Warren Parade. Oh, tomorrow absolutely. Tomorrow. Well, you're going to be there tomorrow, Brent. Right? I'll be at Warren, yeah, for Radio Vermont, so that's always a fun one to yeah. do right there. Well, you know, Dan, I really appreciate you stopping by today, and uh, if later on you're wandering around, we want to invite you to come back if you would. Thank you so much for having me, and I encourage people to go on our website, MontpelierAlive.com, to find out everything we have going on, and if you're wow. so moved, enjoy your up today click on that donate button and help support events like this in the community thank you dan that's dan grover from montpelier alive uh, next we're going to have larry seiler come in oh larry in the meantime we're watching the montpelier Hello. milers who have come by us in one direction and then we'll be turning around they've turned around and they're headed back towards the state capitol so we're watching the runners of all ages and having a really good time even some people in strollers some children in strollers some toddlers running alongside parents and some older folks like us brent are actually doing the mile 
I'm feeling it right now. I've got the burn, Kathy. I've oh, got yeah, the burn. feel the burn. <laughs> Next up this afternoon is going to be Larry Seiler. His program is Able and on the Air. Larry, welcome. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you. It's Able and on Air. Thank you so much for having me speaking today. Oh, great. Give us an idea of what it's all about and what you're doing and some new projects you're working on. Yes. Uh, my wife and I, my wife Arlene and I do a, a show on Orca Media called Able and on Air, which focuses on abilities, not necessarily the disability of people and we've had a wonderful show on Orca Media uh, by the way we want to thank them for helping us out uh, it, uh, since 2015 we've been here in Vermont and we've been focusing on issues uh, such as autism uh, uh, many types of um, interviews um, regarding people with special needs and we are sponsored and, and we have partnered with many organizations we are sponsored by Washington County Mental Health Green Mountain Support Support services and many others including the partnership of the Division for the Blind of Vermont and new, uh, new the new project that we are doing in uh, September is a new sports show called Grid Iron Sports Talk which will focus on special needs sports everything from wheelchair basketball to wheelchair soccer that is exciting. Um, give us an idea how you're setting that up, if you would, Larry. Yes, uh, how we're setting it up, we're setting it up with interviews, um, and it is um, news about special needs sports. Um, special Olympics will be on. Uh, numerous organizations involving uh, special needs sports, including the Wheelchair Basketball Association. So how do you interact with these other groups, uh, specifically Washington County Mental Health? How does that work out? Do they come in? Do they do interviews? Yes, they come into the studio. Um, uh, they've done numerous um, interviews such as art and people with special needs, art and mental health. Um, during COVID, it was really hard for people with uh, disabilities to get services. So Washington County Mental Health has been coming on to talk about COVID and mental health. You know, uh, uh, mental health services are extremely important, especially in today's time and age. And uh, Washington County Mental Health has been at the forefront of those services. And it's extremely important to get the message out that those services do exist. And that's why Able and On Air exists because of um, guests that come on the show. Larry, I want to take, they say thank you very much for being with us today. Look forward to next year and our interview, okay? Yes, and thank you again to Orca Media that has, uh, it's very important to, um, to uh, support people with special needs, especially those that don't have a voice. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure, sir. Thank you. And, and once happy again, I want to welcome everybody back here. We're in the capital of the state of Vermont, Montpelier, and it is time for the parade. How do we know? Well, because there's a police car with blue lights. We want to say hello to the Montpelier Police Department. You can tell just by the sound of the crowd that they're very, very proud of their public safety division. Kathy and I grew up just a couple of uh, couple of streets over. We remember the older officers, Kathy, Sergeant Rock, and the crew. Absolutely. And they were always there to protect, defend, and keep us on the straight and narrow. You know, <laughs> the bottom line is that we, we all we all were challenging, but they did it, and they continue to do that. And it was great to see the Montpelier Police leading the parade this year. Kathy, first up, why don't you take the first one? Hey, we see our neighbors from Vermont, uh, Montpelier VFW Post 792. They're supporting the past, the present, and the future members of foreign wars. The members of the Post and Auxiliary love our service veterans. They provide incredible support to all veterans, and we thank them all for their service and their continued presence in this parade. Kathy, next up is the USS Montpelier. I just got goosebumps to look at all of these men from the Navy. My goodness. <laughs> Well, look, go ahead, give us some insight on this one, Kathy. Well, for many years, the USS Montpelier uh, crew has traveled to Montpelier, Vermont, their namesake, to be in this 4th of July parade. And to have them here and to have them travel all the way from Norfolk, Virginia, just for this, is really phenomenal. Yeah, just, I, I get goosebumps to see them here and then to see another military presence 
And you know what? Uh, that's a great segue, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the members of the USS Montpelier for being here. And we know that they, they roll out the red carpet for them. And speaking of rolling out the red carpet, how about the 40th Marching Band? Vermont's own 40th Army Band is comprised of everyday Vermonters. They'll be performing tomorrow night at Smuggler's Notch for their 4th of July celebration starting at 8 p.m. Find out more about the 40th Army Band at the Vermont National Guard. Talk to your local recruiter. Let's hear some music. You know, Brent, their numbers were not tremendous, but that sound is just wonderful. Nothing like a marching band. Yeah. And to see the military vehicle and come through. Looks like a representative from the National Guard right there. Absolutely, there they are. They're provi providing community support and disaster relief in the event of a state emergency here in Vermont. Their mission, the federal mission of the National Guard, is to support active duty ar Army officers in national emergencies. You can find them on vtguard.com. One of the major sponsors of the event is coming by right now, and that's the National Life Group. Join National Life at their annual Do Good Fest scheduled for Saturday, July 16th. Do Fest is a great event and it's free it's family friendly um, it's held on the lawn at national life go to dogoodfest.com reserve your tickets donations are encouraged but not required that means it's free do good fest benefits the branches of hope the cancer patient fund that is operated at the vermont medical miss, center miss vermont usa team kelsey and kenzie Golica are followed by bernie sanders welcome bernie Thanks for your service, and fo quickly followed by U.S. Representative Peter Welch, serving Vermont and Washington, D.C. Both gentlemen do a phenomenal job, and we're proud to have them in this parade and proud to have them represent Vermont in the U.S. And, Congress. And following those two gentlemen, we've got Molly for Vermont. Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray is Vermont's 82nd current Lieutenant Governor. Now Molly is running for Congress. Now she knows that our biggest challenges are about to come now. She thinks housing, child care, and climate change it won't be solved by Vermont alone. Please visit mollyforvermont.com to learn more. Molly Gray. And don't forget, keep track of all of the participants today because you need to text your favorite parade performer, 802-200-0908. And there's Senator Ann Cummings running for re-election. All right, let's get down, let's get funky here. This is the big nuzzo, province drum true. Than life size, and well, this isn't them, they're coming up right now. Eight life size aliens. These creatures are robotic characters, they'll interact and improvise with each other and the audience. They're born from pandemic. We are the Providence Drum Troop musicians, acrobats, light arts, life size puppets you name it, here it is. Absolutely phenomenal costumes of aliens, they've invaded Montpelier. That group is a pro-choice group in Sun Common. The, the uh, Nazo drummers were also doing some dancing around the corner. Can you see their beautiful flags, rainbow flags, waving around the corner and making sure that everybody's having fun? Well, so far this afternoon, we've had a little bit of everything, and what a great afternoon it is. Once again, I want to remind you that you are watching the ORCA presentation of uh, the 4th or Fourth of July celebration on the 3rd of July, coming to you from Montpelier, Vermont. You know, I had an interesting uh, time and I was doing some research about what it was gonna cost to do the fireworks. And when we get another minute here, I'm gonna definitely chat about that one. Uh, but coming up right now, I believe we have green light real estate. Now, whether you're considering buying a home, selling a home, or both, the agents at green light real estate know this area. They know Montpelier. Barry, Northfield, they know the real estate in this area and it's where they all live. That's why they concentrate on this area. They love being here and talking to you about great, great things that can happen in this area and what it has to offer. And a sweet little float, Brent, you know, a little toy house with all decked out with bunting and flags. 
and red, white, and blue beads and children on the on the wagon. So thank you to them for participating. Followed followed by Ann Watson, who's running. She's currently the mayor of Montpelier, and she's running for Washington County State Senate. She's running on a platform of climate action, protecting working families, and she's looking forward to meeting with each of you and hearing your issues. What's important to you? You know, what would a parade be, Kathy, without a tractor? Hey, it's a John Deere. There you found go. Found right in Middlebury, Vermont. So Connor Casey for the house. Kate McCann, Connor Casey are both running for the two vacant Montpelier house seats. Kate McCann of Vermont's 2017 Teacher of the Year, also small business owner. Connor Casey is a current Vermont City Councilor, excuse me, Montpelier City Councilor and Executive Director of Gun Sense of Vermont. It was a 320R John Deere tractor with a cab on it in case anybody was really interested in seeing. I think it's going to be the lone tractor. I think you might be right. And I just want to take a quick second to thank our production crew here, Finn, Chris, Zach, and Jen for putting this all together and making sure we look, we look and sound fantastic on this parade day. And here is the Worcester Vermont Historical Society. It says, come to Worcester for an old fashioned 4th of July. And that's exactly what they'll be doing tomorrow at 11 o'clock. It says Worcester Voices will be performing at four o'clock at the Worcester Village Cemetery. Cute float with a cow featuring the first cow of the parade. Make sure to vote for your favorite parade performer at 802-200-0908. Thank you, Worcester. Coming up next is Gregory Thayer of Rutland. He's a candidate for the Vermont Lieutenant Governor's position. Thayer is a constitutional conservative, a Republican. His campaign is about we the people with a common sense approach to governing. This is Thayer for Vermont. And that is a big logging truck he's got there with a grappler on the back. My goodness, it's seen a lot of work. You know, it's always it's always interesting, Brent, for for especially folks that are that are vehicle hounds to see what what comes out in a parade. You know, my kids always used to love to watch the the fire trucks and the fire trucks used to shoot water at the at the hot crowds and just what kind of vehicles come. So there's quite a mixture today. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I have. And what a, what a great combination, kids and big trucks. Oh, you bet. <laughs> and you can hear the music coming here. The Filipino American Association of Central Vermont would like to introduce themselves to the community by participating in our parade today. They're a small but vibrant group, and they've been active for four decades since the early 80s. They're performing in the parade, one of the traditional Philippine folk dances with music called Tic Tic. And I'll tell you what, this is the first time they've been in our parade, and we welcome them. Good to have them here. Coming up next is Chris Winters. Chris is running for Secretary of State. He's going to ensure that the Secretary of State's office remains effective when it comes to elections, voting rights, business registration, and professional licensing. The many other excellent services Vermonters expect from the Secretary of State, Chris is ready to lead. I think that Vermont is blessed with a great number of leaders. Yeah, we saw two of them early on. Certainly Bernie Sanders has been a leader. Well, we got a little funk and soul hey, coming right here. Hey, can you move to this rhythm or what? Sheeta Projects is a Vermont-based nonprofit organization focused on sharing the values of West African culture through workshops, performances in schools, community organizations, and venues. Our goal is to promote diversity through activities, they say. And they are doing wonderful African dance and drumming. Isn't it wonderful? Next up is the Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Vermonters for Justice in Palestine called for freedom, justice to the Palestinians, human rights, and equality to all. Hey, and you can't miss those little league uniforms. What would a parade be without a little league? And this is the Central Vermont Little League composed of Berlin, Cabot, Callis, East Montpelier, Marshfield, Middlesex, Montpelier, Plainfield, and Worcester. It's for all kids ages 4 to 12, and we have to stop and say thank you to their parents for making sure that worked. 
Now we're looking at the Vermont Mountaineers. What a year they're having, Kathy. I'll tell you oh. what, Skip has led that crew, and they are knocking it out of the park. Obviously, uh, there's certainly a fan, the group of fans right behind us that are cheering for the Mountaineers. Welcome back. You know, it's so much fun because they look for our residents for these uh, young ball players as they come to visit in Vermont. And it's truly, truly a, uh, a community effort. And it's awesome to have a team like that here so that those youngsters playing in the Little League that are marching just ahead of them get to see what it's like to make that a career. Coming up next, Falun Dafa, also called Falun Gong. This is an ancient practice to improve mind and body. It's based on exercise, meditation, and the universal value of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. The beauty of goodness of Falun Gong, the practice's inner selves shines through in their performance, enriching the lives of all that they touch. Let's take a minute, we'll get a wonderful opportunity to listen to this rhythmic session. And on cue, they stopped playing. And I thank you very much to everyone for that. Just a, just an absolutely beautiful yellow costume for everyone. And, and such a peaceful sound, a truly peaceful sound. Certainly a key to the diversity in this community, and it is just wonderful to see this. And follow, closely following them is David Zuckerman, a candidate for lieutenant governor, former legislator from Hinesburg. He's running for his old office, and believe it or not, he supports climate action, economic justice, and He's driving yet another tractor, an international. I'm guessing that was from about 1948, 1952 era. Oh my God, yes. You know, we see David a lot on a tractor during uh, the political season. Yeah. And I'm sure he uses it at other times as well. And now, while we have just a pause in the parade, just want to remind you this afternoon that you can vote for your best performer by dialing 802-200-0908. Text vote, and then you get to vote for the best performer this afternoon. And boy, that's gonna be a great prize. We'll talk about that in just a minute. We got Jared Duvall. He's running for state senate. Jared is running to represent Washington County, Stowe, Orange, Braintree, in the Vermont State Senate. He is a Democratic candidate in the up and coming primary election on October 9th. He comes from and is committed to the working class of Vermont, a nonprofit executive and a former economic developer for the Vermont, uh, oh, he was a director for Vermont. He has been a leader for climate action and a more equitable economy for over 20 years. Kathy, here's something near oh, and dear to both of our hearts. It is indeed. As we hear the music echo from the canyons of these buildings. It, it just, you know, there, people either love or hate bagpipes. I, I happen to be in the, in the love category. The Catamount Pipe Band, players and drummers are playing traditional pipe tunes. And I think the, the, the tartan that they're wearing is the McLaren plaid. They're wearing the, the typical kilt with a score on in front and playing full bags. Let's give a listen. Following the Catamount Pipe Band is John Odom, Democratic uh, candidate for Secretary of State. a nice mix of folks there, young and old. And they're followed by Kitty Toll from Danville, Vermont. She's the Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor. She is a former middle school teacher. She served in legislature for 12 years. She's running for Lieutenant Governor to be a strong voice for all who call Vermont home. Vote for Kitty Toll. And again, the uh, number of politicians almost uh, 
almost staggering in this particular parade, but as we've mentioned several times, we've got, uh, we've got some uh, primaries coming up. August 9th, Brent. To vote in the primaries in Vermont, if you can't get to your local polling place, John, open. John Campbell from uh, state's attorneys and uh, sheriffs right there. Right, followed by the Girl Scouts. Girl Scout Troop 30228 is a multi-level troop with girls from Waterbury, Vermont area. The troop is made up of girls from grades two through eight. In addition to doing fun activities this past year, they've actually helped out the community by raising money for a local homeless shelter, collecting donations for the food shelf and the Humane Society, and making homemade Valentine's Day for the Senior Center. Boy, oh boy, what a great organization. How oh, very kind. and. and Holy Toledo, to borrow one of your expressions, holy Toledo, we're just inundated here with bicycles. I believe these are from, supported by Onion River. Outdoors, just a full contingent of all sizes of bikes. There's an old banana seat bike, I don't know if you remember those. 10 speed bikes, bikes that are being, that are, oh, there's a tandem bike with an adult, a child, followed by a child's cart. What a great representation, and there is a bike with the fattest tires I've ever seen. Brent, you would be comfortable on that one with those big tires. I don't know, Kathy. Maybe yes, maybe no. I really like my position right here. Oh, I think that they're just exuding the energy that you can feel from this parade. It's been so exciting to see everybody turn out. Young, old, everybody of different abilities enjoying their time in the limelight here on Main Street and soon to be State Street as they turn the corner. And the Kellogg Hubbard Library is back this year with an all new look and their book cart drills. On Friday night after the library closes, librarians want to kick back and relax and they spend some time practicing precision drills and having speed shelving competitions. A little of that extreme athleticism is on display. Additionally, they have participants from the summer reading program. You can see the kiddos here. They've made stars and, and they've made characters from their favorite books. The summer reading program theme this year is Oceans and Possibilities. And the programs, prizes, challenges all throughout the summer to get these kids reading. Christina Nolan is going to is will be our next uh, U.S. Senator according to her promo. Christina has already cleaned up the state for you, serving as Vermont's U.S. Attorney, cracking down on statewide opioids crisis. Now she's going to use her law enforcement background to serve Vermont in the Senate. This is Christina Nolan, U.S. Senate campaign. And Christina does have quite a history of, of the work that she's done in her previous jobs. Just like all of these people, everybody comes to a job, and it really is a job in politics to make sure Vermont is represented, and they come with a very, very diverse experience and background that they, they're willing to share. And the next candidate is Charity Clark, running for Attorney General for Vermont. She worked at the Attorney General's office for the past eight years, is an attorney in private practice before that. She's a native Vermonter. She loves to hike, take pride in knowing the communities in which she was raised, and if elected, she'll be the first female attorney general in the state of Vermont. Next up is Bridget Grace for state's attorney of Washington County. Bridget's running for Washington County state's attorney, currently deputy state's attorney here. She was born and raised in Washington County, looks forward to continue to serve, experience, dedicated, and a true Vermonter. And closely followed is Ethan Park. There's a, there's a fly-in candidate here for Tess Taylor for assistant judge, but then comes Ethan Park, a candidate for state representative of Washington 4 District that includes Montpelier. He's walking with friends and supporters. The theme for him today is in freedom and unity, there is hope. You know, as I look around, the red, white, and blue is all around us. Great shirts, great clothing. Well, I did my flags. best. You know, I did my best to you know, add, yes, I add some that. red, white, and blue. Yeah, You've got yeah. the colors, indeed. Now, Ken Jones, who's running for state legislature representing Montpelier, 
Ken has been a member of the Montpelier School Board on the board for Central Vermont Fiber and co-founder of the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee. The Japan American Society of Vermont seeks to improve cross-cultural understanding and mutually beneficial interactions with, between Japanese and Vermont individuals. They sincerely would like to congratulate America's birthday today. Washington County Senator Andrew Perchlick Washington County Senator is motivated by decades of work and the climate conscious energy transformation. He was elected in 2018 as a member of the Education Committee. He has advocated for the installation of ventilation system in Vermont schools, federal COVID relief funds, and work to provide substantial school support and programming. And right behind them, this is, this is becoming a rapid fire with Sarah Copeland Haddon says, <laughs> she is uh, really excited to be fighting for democracy and for your individual liberties. She is certainly uh, a dynamic leadership. She's proving dy dynamic leadership and hitting the ground running to fight for Vermonters in ever-changing political climate. She is a candidate for Secretary of State. And coming right up is All Together Now. Families, people of all ages, dressed in costumes, they're carrying puppets and celebrating their independence. Right before them, sneaking in uh, before the last candidate was Zach Sullivan running for state representative in District 5. He's here with an assortment of dinosaurs who wanted to, to be fossil fuels when they grow up, who don't want to be fossil fuels when they grow up. That's Zach Sullivan for U.S. state representative. Look at these beautiful cranes, aren't they lovely? They're just floating in the cool breeze. What a gorgeous day for parade. Indeed it is. I think they plan. They couldn't plan this better, you know, just to have this weather. And if there's anything better than watching a parade, it's being in a parade, <laughs> don't you think? I, I absolutely agree. Your heart and soul really get revved up when you hear the drums and you start moving in rhythm and you see your friends and neighbors all along the parade route. It's always a great opportunity to see who's out this year. And what a great relief it is to be back with our friends and neighbors after such a long confinement. It certainly, certainly feels good to get this fresh air and watch the energy coming through here. Magnificent puppets here, absolutely magnificent. And tucked in here between the globe and the sun, we've got Green Mountain Self Advocates, a disability group for over Vermont, for all over Vermont. We hope for full inclusion, they say. I like to see the red, white, and blue walking down Main Street. And here's, a, here's an Uncle Sam top hat floating by. Rory Tebow for Attorney General. He's an experienced prosecutor. Rory has a strong connection to the community he serves and a commitment to justice rooted in Vermont values. As a veteran and former Army officer, he leads from the front and is ready to advocate on behalf of all Vermonters as our next Attorney General. And his supporters. Rory Tebow for Attorney General. Thank you, my dear. They're, they're handing out uh, pinwheels here. And then Becca Bailent is running for Congress to be a voice for all Vermonters. A parent and public school teacher and president of the Senate, Becca fought for working people her entire life. She's been a tested leader with a track record of delivering services to Vermonters and Washington has left behind. She has the experience needed to deliver for Vermonters the integrity, the courage, and the grit that Vermonters need in Washington. Next up is Jonathan Williams running for Barry City's next Democratic State Representative. He stands for food, economic security, and better infrastructure and e equity. And here hey, we go, Kat. Check out the honeybees. Honeybees Street Band, oh, Steel Band presents I Will Survive and a fifth Beethoven to raise public awareness about protecting honeybees and other pollinators. Remember to write down this number, 802-200-0908, and vote for your absolute favorite performer in the parade. You might want to wait till it's done, but this one, this one is certainly 
certainly very thematic. All of the walkers are also all dressed up for it. Coming up is Erica Reddick, rigorous honesty. Erica was born and raised in Vermont from a very young age. She knew that her purpose was to make a difference in the community. Erica is running for U.S. Congress. I think we're about to hear Beethoven's fifth. Oh, all the bees are laying on the ground at the intersection of State and Main. Oh, and now they've come back to life. You'll be happy to know they've come back to life. And they are doing the bee will alive. We bee will survive dance at the corner of State and Main. You know, as I was coming up from State Street, Brent, you know, there was a huge turnout on the Capitol lawn. Yeah, he was saying there was maybe around 15,000. Wow, I, I can believe it. And like the streets are truly lined here in Montpelier. We haven't seen this in, in many years and it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the treats. Thank you for thinking of us. It's wonderful to see it. It truly is. This is the spirit of America and democracy. And speaking of democracy, here's the League of Women Voters to remind everyone democracy is not a spectator sport. They encourage everyone to vote. Folks can register at their booth on the State House lawn. The League of Women Voters for Vermont. that the uh, League of Women Voters has hired private security. And they're closely followed by, the, it might not be them, Dissent for Independence in lieu of celebrating a country whose highest court has continued to roll back human rights. They're peacefully protesting the overturning of Roe v. Wade and advocating for the state and federal codification and reproductive rights for all people in this country. That's, that's an interesting dynamic right there. Oh, Brent, this is your music. I can hear your, your congas coming up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You're the one that gave my oldest son a set of drums for Christmas. It will come back to haunt you. Jen Kulu, the traditional West African drum and dance corps. Aren't they wonderful? Mike Piacek. This is a familiar name, running for state treasurer now to follow the retiring treasurer Beth Pierce. He is, Mike has been the commissioner at the Department of Financial Regulation for the past six years. And we all saw him during the COVID, uh, COVID and daily And Mike is response. followed by all things LGBTQ. We are a news and interview show aired weekly on Orca Media. Make sure you check that out on the internet as well as on your television, 1075. And that is LGBTQ on Orca. And it also says vote for Brenda Churchill in the back. So here's Brenda for governor. And of course, everybody wants to be a star once they see the cameras on. <laughs> and they're doing a great job. They're coming up one more time for LGBTQ. I, I think they sort of get interspersed as things happen in, in a parade. The uh, vote for vote for Brenda and the LGBTQ folks have sort of commingled at this point. I did not see the Vermont Mountaineers go by though. Didn't, they were in their, their, their little wagon a little while ago. You get, looks like Anya Tenio is here. What's she running for again? She is running for the U.S. House of Representatives and she wants people to know that she wishes all participants and spectators a very happy fourth. There's those 
flags. You know, it, there's just something very heartwarming about flags. Well, I have to agree with and you. A, and a respectful display of flags, I think. Everyone here is respectful of one another. And while we have a pause, I want to remind you to vote for your favorite performer today. And that's going to mean the Union Mutual $500 prize. Call 802-200-0908, text VOTE. You'll get your choices, and by golly, that will be a good thing. There's a lot of choices, that's for sure. We've got a Jeep Gladiator touting Deploy Malloy. He's running for U.S. Senate, seat being vacated by Pat Leahy, Senator Leahy. Mallory is seeking to serve Vermonters, Vermont and the United States of America. Mr. Mallory is a West Point grad and a retired veteran. He'll support and defend the Constitution. Come right up is Paul Bean for Vermont. This floats in support of Paul Bean for the Vermont State Senate of Washington County. Vote Bean for traditional values and new approaches. Nice bright red F-150 XLT with the Apollos in the back. Giving us some live music. Here's Jeremy Hansen running for you represent to represent Washington County, Braintree, Orange, Stowe, and the Vermont Senate. A particular focus on housing, universal health care, and climate change. Fun for everyone. I'm up for this. Vermont. Vermont sled hockey. Yay! The Central Vermont Pioneers are folks who love to play hockey and are a sled hockey team made up of Vermonters with physical disabilities. Most of us have some type of physical disability, I know. <laughs> We're real, very familiar with that. That makes sitting in a hockey sled the only way we can play the sport. This year, they won the New England Sled Hockey Tournament in Springfield, Mass. Woohoo! Want to give a special shout out to my buddy John McArdle. He is an exceptional athlete, and John and I have been friends for a long time. Next up is Myers Mermel. He is a Republican running for U.S. Senate from Manchester, endorsed, endorsed by Governor Mike Huckabee. Myers is a conservative who wants to reduce inflation, bring down the price of food, heating oil, and gasoline, while at the same time fighting crime. Can you hear it? Just listen for those drums, and you're going to hear the fifes any second, I know it. You know, this type of fife and drum corps really harkens us back to the roots of, of why we're all celebrating July 4th. You know, yeah, seven, I, I agree. 1775, 1776. And when the parade started, it's interesting that when the parades started in, in Montpelier in the late 1800s, um, they did them early in the morning and they always scheduled them for a Saturday so they would never interfere with Sunday church services. Isn't that exceptional? It is. Actually, the first day that uh, the 4th of July was celebrated is, well, we go back to July 1807, and it was called National Jubilee. And now let's give a listen. Hannaford Fife and Drum Corps, based in St. Albans, Vermont, named after Captain Nathaniel Hannaford, a drum major in the War of 1812. They exist to keep the history of America alive through music. They are not related to the Hannaford's grocery store, however. I just get goosebumps. I, I, I can't help it. Makes you feel like marching, doesn't it? It does. It really does. These Coming up strong. next is for <clears throat> excuse me, for Patricia Preston, a lifelong Vermonter, Democrat running to become the next Lieutenant Governor of Vermont. She believes in the promise of Vermont and is ready to lead Vermont into the future. She says it belongs to everybody. She'll bring Vermonters together for every corner of our state. This is Patricia for Vermont. shiny truck with some nice mag wheels on there pulling a hay wagon. Remember to vote for your favorite presenter today, your performer at 802-200-0908. Let them know there are cash prizes available. 500 for first place, 300 for second, and 200 for third. So make sure you hop on there at the end of the parade. Merrick Monin is a passionate young Vermonter and he is running for Montpelier's seat in the August primary. 
East Montpelier works on the school board and City Hall has inspired him to make changes for Vermont youth. This is Merrick Modem. A young lad, a very young lad. And uh oh, it, here, oh they come. here they are. Yeah. And who could possibly not recognize the Mount Sinai number three Motor Corps? You know, for as long as I can remember, I've always seen the Shriners represent at parades, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, um, any any parade, Fourth of July, and they never cease to amaze and entertain children. But they also do all of their work for children. Whenever I see the Shriners, I'm compelled to talk about a police case where I went to a, a rather sad apartment building where a little girl had been left alone making breakfast for her brother and her flannel nightgown caught on fire because they were heating the apartment with the oven. Uh, when I got there, my first call was for emergency services. The ambulance arrived and the ambulance captain said, Brent, call the Shriners. I put in one phone call to a number that I had kept for 22 years and everything for that little girl was taken care of. Her family was taken care of. It was the most incredible scenario I can describe. And it's all because of these selfless men and what they do all year long. And it's all about children. And they support 22 different Shriners hospitals. It's not, you know, I'm very familiar with Boston Shriners Hospital, but there are 22 around the country. And we thank them for their efforts. And so many children and families have lived to tell of the of the great work that they do. And you know, if they could have a nickel for every smile that they bring <laughs> out at a parade, it would really help the whole project. You know, it's not just the motor corps. This is the motor corps, but they've got clowns and they've got you know all sorts of popcorn machines, and they go wherever they're asked to go. No, you know, no hesitation. They just go. And if you can see the street here in Montpelier, the motor corps is is riding. Uh, down Main Street and stopping to shake the hand of every child along the way and waving to all of us grown-ups as well. <laughs> and they're probably half the people in this audience would love to be riding those go-karts. Oh, you know, wouldn't you like to try it? Oh, absolutely. My favorite one was the police car with that, you know, it's a push me pull you where like one end is going one direction, <laughs> the other is going the other. I, you know, I always wondered how they do that. That's the one I want to drive. And don't forget that the Shriners are responsible for the Maple Sugar Bowl game between Vermont and New Hampshire. Again, all proceeds go to the Shriners Hospital. They're fearless. I mean, they're driving up and over in Mount Sinai number three motor core. I don't, what do you call that? Like a stretch suburban? I, yeah, absolutely. And, and they, That's a custom suburban made for them. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's long and the traditional golden red of the Shriners. And you know what? The Shriners just keep on coming. They do. They are just, uh, they do not have a small footprint in any parade because when they're called, they turn out in force. And they that's do. what we have here today. And kudos to the, again to the Montpelier Live Committee for putting this all together. This is, this is huge. And it's, you know, this is your 50th class reunion from Montpelier High School this year. And this really harkens back to the time when we were kids here and there was such a presence of neighbors and friends and support for everyone's opinions and support for being American. And that's really what this has been about today. You know, I took some time to do some research on fireworks. And this year with the cost increases, yeah, I was fascinated. The normal ten to $12,000 fireworks package that cities like Montpelier use, this year, I've got to just double check because this year, it's up 350% in $40,000 to $40,000. Wow. That's how much the increase has been for uh, fireworks. And well, speaking I of fireworks, <laughs> that's going to come up later on tonight. But as for us here today, on behalf of all of us here at Orca, I want to thank you, Kathy, for being here. Thank you. My lovely sister, it's just a magnificent to be able to share time with you and certainly do it when we're doing something fun together. So. Once again, thank you for tuning in today. Kathy, any last words? Happy 4th of July and freedom for all. Happy birthday, America. So long for now.